Well, he was killed in captivity after they released a video of him. And he was the most well-known hostage of everyone. So, sh so he really had the biggest bargaining capacity for Hamas. And that just shows how barbaric you have to be. This is the only thing that, you know, they, this, this piece of the puzzle, Hershkover Poland, I mean, it's terrible to think, to even talk about him that way, but it's, it's, you know, it's Hamas's, one of Hamas's, you know, main mar bargaining tactics was, okay, we have this big host, we have a bunch of hostages, but Hirsch Goldberg specifically was mentioned by the president. He was mentioned by many world leaders. You know, he would, in almost every, at the DNC, they, you know, the parents got up, at the RNC, the parents got up. I mean, he was everywhere. And the fact that they still killed him, they still killed him in captivity. After all of that, after all of that, after going through all of that, the parents had to go through months and months of, you know, seeing the video, you know, a, a couple months later, this happens, but, you know, just months before that, not knowing what happened to their son, not knowing, you know, if he was going to come out alive and, and begging world leaders and convincing world leaders to bring him up and making a whole Instagram page and, and, and spending, you know, your whole, the last year of your life, basically, you know, advocating for him day in and day out. And then this happens. And that is really, I mean, it's hard to understand. It's, it's just it's unfathomable, but maybe, maybe a rogue Hamas agent just killed him or something, but it's unfathomable to believe that Hamas would do that after they understand, they, they have to understand that he is their most valuable hostage um, in terms of just bargaining power and how, you know, what they can get for him or whatever. They have to understand that. And they, that's why they released a video of him to basically, you know, grab the world's heartstrings and then to kill him anyway. It, it must mean that they just either don't, you know, they think that it's over and they just, they're just all finished. Um, you know, maybe they think that this will, you know, make the Israeli government push the Israeli government. The rest of the hostage families will push them even harder. I don't know what, but specifically Hershkoberg Poland is insane. They have to be insane, you know, to kill him with no political. It's not a political move at all. It's just totally savage and barbaric the way they just killed them in captivity. Unbelievable. I, I can't even imagine for to be the family and just, just constant you know, convincing people, it's so hard to convince a world leader to even utter his work, his name and, and the amount of energy that went into just advocating for him and, and the amount of just anguish of not knowing what happened, not knowing what happened, getting the video. And then this is unbelievable. And on top of that, I mean, it must be terrible for the other hostages because a lot of them, you know, aren't so well known. And a lot of them feel like maybe they're left out. Nobody really cares as much, but Obviously, you know, to us, it's much more across the board, six hostages, all the same. But the but the idea, you have to recognize that Hamas knows, they have to know that Hirsch Goldberg Poland is their number one hostage in terms of trading ability. And they have to know that keeping him alive is paramount, almost as paramount as keeping someone like a Hamas senior officer alive, like a Sinwar or a or uh, call it Mashal. They have to know that. And if if they killed him anyway, it means that they have something else on the table or they, they have some other plan or strategy or maybe they got Israel to already agree to a ceasefire and that's why they did it. But it's just absolutely crazy to think that they know that he's the number one bargaining power that they have and they, they, they just killed him.